What does it mean to live a full life? What does it mean to live a full life? When people pass away, we usually say things like this in the obituary that so-and-so lived a full life. Maybe they had lots of children, grandchildren, long years of marriage, a healthy life, a wealthy life, a career, a legacy to leave behind. What, what dictates whether we live a full life? Are you living a fulfilled life now? How do you know that you are? On this Good Shepherd Sunday, all the readings, of course, pointing to Jesus, the Good Shepherd. On Good Shepherd Sunday, we are introduced to the Good Shepherd in a particular way. The Good Shepherd is one who wants to bring abundant life for his sheep. The Good Shepherd wants to give abundant life for his sheep. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, what does he want for his sheep? Abundant life. We can go directly to the psalm, Psalm 23, which is known and loved by so many. It begins by saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Better, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. Already the theme of abundance is introduced. And how is the shepherd caring for his sheep? We hear all through the psalm what the shepherd does, caring constantly and abundantly for his sheep. So how does Jesus, the good shepherd, care for us? Through the sacraments. Where are we receiving abundant life? Through the sacraments. And the psalm points to them. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. I lack nothing. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The restful waters of baptism, where our souls are restored to their divine dignity, filled with the Trinitarian life for the first time. The divine life of God enters our souls at baptism. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths. Confession, repentance turning back to the Lord. You spread a table before me, the Eucharistic sacrifice, where the shepherd gives himself his body, blood, soul, and divinity for his sheep to feed on. The verdant pasture is Christ himself, the good shepherd himself. You anoint my head with oil. We're anointed at baptism on our heads with chrism. And then again at confirmation on our foreheads where we are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. There it is. Abundance. This theme of abundance is carried through in the Gospel of John. In chapter 1, Jesus says, he wants to give us grace upon grace. In chapter 2 of John, we hear about the wedding of Cana. The first public miracle of Jesus, many, 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 many gallons of wine, abundance. The multiplication of the loaves and the fish, 12 wicker baskets left over, abundance. Jesus, the good shepherd, desires one thing for us, abundant life. All God wants to do is give us his life. Abundant life. And that's how it is that the Good Shepherd cares for us. He gives us this abundant life through the sacraments. So if we know we receive the abundant life from the sacraments, where? Where is this abundant life found? In the church. The church is where we find abundant life. And one of the ways in which the church teaches about herself in the catechism, one of the symbols of the church is the sheepfold. The catechism teaches, the church is accordingly a sheepfold, the sole and necessary gateway to which is Christ. 
It is also the flock of which God himself foretold that he would be the shepherd and whose sheep, even though governed by human shepherds, are unfailingly nourished and led by Christ himself, the good shepherd and prince of shepherds, who gave his life for his sheep. The church is the sheepfold. Abundant life is found in the sheepfold of the church. But in our modern minds, in our modern culture, to hear the word the church probably doesn't often bring up for us this nurturing and beautiful imagery of a sheepfold. When we hear the church, we might immediately be experiencing negative emotions, maybe even resentment towards the church. We can justly be upset with the bureaucracy in the church. We can justly be upset with the hierarchy in the church, with bishops, with pastors, with me, can be justly upset because all of us shepherds are flawed, sinful men. We can be upset with the scandal in the church and the harm that comes from our own sins. But the church is more than just the hierarchy. The church isn't just the hierarchy. The church is more. She's the sheepfold and many other things. She's the sheepfold. Christ creates it. He gathers the sheep together. Jesus wants every soul on the planet to be in the sheepfold. Why? Because this is where he wants to give us abundant life. We find abundant life in the sheepfold of the church. If I leave the church, then I am removing myself from the care of the Good Shepherd. If I leave the church, I am rejecting the abundant life that Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, wants to give to me. Now, we all have to check our hearts about our attitude toward the church. Because the church is loved by Jesus. Because we just heard in the catechism about this Good Shepherd. What does he do? The good shepherd and prince of the shepherds gives his life for his sheep. And if we want to know how much Jesus loves the church, we just have to look at the crucifix. Because that's how much he loves the church. See, he loves the church. He loves it. He loves her. She is his bride. As good shepherd, it is his sheepfold. And so we can live in a very wrong approach to Christianity. We can live Christianity in a way that is constrained and restrictive. We think if we embrace this life of Jesus in the church that our lives are going to be limited, that I'm going to lose my freedom, that my life will be constrained and restricted. That's not correct. We need to offer our lives to Christ completely to be open and receptive to the abundant life which is himself that he wants to give to us. There's a very famous, somewhat lengthy quote by our late Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, a very happy memory. Early on in his pontificate, he was preaching a homily at, I think it was a World Youth Day. And this quote fits well with our resistance and our temptation to have the wrong idea about Christianity and the wrong idea about what it means to live our life as faithful Catholics in the church. Benedict stated, Are we not perhaps all afraid in some way? If we let Christ enter fully into our lives, if we open ourselves totally to him, are we not afraid that he might take something away from us? Are we not perhaps afraid to give up something significant, something unique, something that makes life so beautiful? Do we not then risk ending up diminished and deprived of our freedom? No. 
If we let Christ into our lives, we lose nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful, and great. No. Only in this friendship are the doors of life opened wide. Only in this friendship is the great potential of human existence truly revealed. Only in this friendship do we experience beauty and liberation. And so today, with great strength and great conviction, on the basis of long personal experience of life, I say to you, dear young people, do not be afraid of Christ. He takes nothing away, and he gives you everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. Yes, open, open wide the doors to Christ, and you will find true life. Abundant life, abundant life is found in the sheepfold of the church. Abundant life is found in the sheepfold of the church. What is a full life? The Catholic life. Where will I live a fulfilled life? In the sheepfold of the church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.